Okay, so we've got an energy question. In fact, we have three energy questions. Um, and they're all pretty related, so I, I thought it's best just to knock the three of them out together. Um, and just be done with it. So, basically we have this diagram of a pinball machine launch ramp consisting of a spring of force constant K and a 30 degree ramp of length L. <clears throat> So part one says you want to launch, launch the pinball, a spear of mass M and radius R, so that it just barely reaches the top, right there, uh, barely reaches the top of the ramp without rolling back. What distance should the spring be compressed? You may assume friction is sufficient that the ball begins rolling without slipping immediately after launch. Okay. Well, got a couple things to look at here. So the first thing I would recognize is that this is an energy question besides the fact that it says it here. Hopefully you can see that this is an energy question. Um, now, because there's not any external forces, if we consider the spring and all this to be the ball to be part of our system, we have conservation of energy. Energy final equals energy initial, and I'll box that. That's going to be pretty important. So that's the first thing. Uh, let's go ahead and write this out. So we have energy final. Uh, we'll have kinetic energy transitional plus kinetic energy rotational plus potential energy final equals potential energy initial plus kinetic energy transitional plus kinetic energy rotational. And since it reaches the top at rest, hopefully you can see that there is no kinetic energy. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. And the same thing can be said here. No, it's not. We assume, I'm going to assume it's starting at rest. So potential ener energy final will be M times G times H is equal to the initial potential energy is from our spring. So maybe we should put Hooke's Law. And for that, well, Hooke's Law is going to relate forces, but from that we can relate our potential energy. Your potential energy for a spring equals one half K constant times the distance compressed squared. And I'll use delta X squared. And that's obviously related to the force done by that from Hooke's law. So I'm just going to put this down here. This can come from Hooke's law. Uh, okay, so one half k x squared where x is the distance uh the spring is either compressed or stretched from equilibrium so we want to solve for that you get 2 mg h divided by k square root equals x now the height that's your height h Okay, this is opposite of our angle here, theta, which we know to be 30 degrees. So we know that the hypotenuse times sine of theta is equal to h. Sine of theta is opposite h over hypotenuse l. Multiply over by the l, you'll get that. So now we can write this as x equals 2mgl sine of theta, which they give us is 30 degrees, divided by k. Let's see, sine of 30 degrees is one half. So if you can imagine there just being a half here, it'll cancel out with this two. And you'll get x equals mgl divided by k square root. Whatever. 
whatever that's the answer um mgl square root mgl over k part two asks what's the ball speed immediately after being launched so now we're considering our initial time to be right after launch okay well we're going to do the same thing as before we're going to use our energy equation and say energy final equals energy initial your final energy by because it's still going to be launched at the same part it'll be mgl over two that's your potential energy your potential energy is mgh your height doesn't change it's still l sine theta and theta is still 30 degrees so it's just mgl over two but now we want to consider the initial velocity so you're going to have kinetic energy transitional that's your tangential velocity uh, that we'll look at as well as kinetic energy rotational so that's just going to be one half mass times initial velocity squared plus one half i omega squared a couple things that we'll want to know is since it's uh mentioned here without slipping then we can say velocity is equal to r times omega or v squared over uh sorry v squared over r squared is equal to omega squared and the moment of inertia for a solid sphere is two-fifths m r squared that's for a spear. Okay, so we get MGL over 2 equals 1 half MV initial squared plus 1 half. Let's do our first substitution, 2 fifths MR squared. Uh, omega squared is V squared over R squared. And if we look, we can cancel out a mass. We can multiply out the two. The R squareds and R squareds cancel. Uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. And we get GL equals V initial squared plus two fifths V initial squared. So that's a lot nicer. If we get a common denominator, you'll get 7 fifths the initial squared, multiply by the 5, divide by the 7, take the square root. Velocity initial is 5GL divided by 7, square root. Um, that's that and now for three it says suppose the ramp is whacked so that there's no friction in other words you don't have uh just before when we were able to say the friction was there without slipping now you're going to have that slipping now this is going to be no different than part a because in part a when we did our kinetic energy uh, our energy equation we saw that the only from here really the change in potential energy was zero if we were to move potential energy initial over in other words kinetic energy had no role to play in this part of the question it was just potential energy those will still go to zero here even though it would change how you would look at it they still go to zero so you can still say that it's going to be mgl over k square root that won't change uh, because the only thing that matters there is your potential energy. So hopefully that helps out. That's all of our energy questions for this. Um, I'm going to kind of keep going through these and grinding and uh, I'm getting better at this and hopefully you guys are too. So it works out.